Hello and welcome to Octopus Do. I'm Christian Ross. Today's project is going to be chainmail. If you've been working with chainmail, watching the other videos that I've done so far, then you've got a good basic understanding and you're ready for this project. Today's project is going to be European 4-in-1. Now this is the first of the European weaves, so it's pretty exciting. You'll have a lot of fun with this, I think. This is the basis for a lot of chainmail designs that you'll see. If you go to museums and look at the armor that uh, knights wear and, and things like that, then this is a common pattern, or the most common pattern really, that you're going to see. European 4-in-1 means that it's the European design, of course, as I mentioned, but it means that there are four jump rings going into one, and that's the pattern. For a brief tutorial on how to open and close jump rings, I recommend watching the earlier chainmail videos I've done, but if you're caught up on those, this is going to be the great next project. You can always create your own chainmail rings, but we're not going to get into that right now. We're going to work with some pre-cut rings that I've gotten, and there are so many different places to get those. One is the Ring Lord online. You can pick those up from Amazon. Beadalon makes a great product that you can always pick up that is pre-packaged. It comes with great description and good list of sizes that are good for different types of chainmail on the back, so that's very handy to have. But the ones that we're working with today are ones that I've picked up online. I'm going to be working with some larger size aluminum rings. They're very easy to work with. Aluminum doesn't tarnish. It's a great material and it's a softer metal than your stainless steel or even sterling silver. So this is going to be a great beginner material. The specific size that I'm working with is a 20 gauge. And if you are familiar with working with wire, 20 gauge is one of the most common sizes that you're going to see. The other measurement that you should look at is the ring inside diameter. On this particular size that my demo is going to be with, it's a 15 64th of an inch, which is a very large size as far as jewelry is concerned, not so much as far as armor. Now something you also might find very handy when working with chainmail is um, a visor or even reader glasses if you need them. I definitely need them for this. Uh, it's a good way to make sure that my rings are closed all the way. And then you're going to need two pair of pliers. Any type of plier that has a flat inside is what you're going to need. Make sure that they don't have teeth. Those aren't jewelry making pliers, so they're smooth on the inside. I'm using some rather fine chain nose pliers. Uh, these are from Zuron and these are Dale Cougar Armstrong specific pliers and they have really fine points. I like that when I'm working with smaller jump rings because I can really get into the weave with no problem. Lots of people use different types of pliers, such as a bent chain nose or a flat nose. This just happens to be what I'm working with today. Now the first step is opening a few jump rings. I'm going to go ahead and open a bunch of jump rings so that we can just get started with weaving. When I say open chainmail rings, this is what I'm talking about. One side is open just a little bit, and you do that by lifting up so that you can string other closed jump rings on this or string this through your weave and then close it. I have several jump rings open. I didn't really count. I just opened a bunch so that we could get started. So the next step is going to be take a jump ring because remember it's European four in one. So take one jump ring, 
and close it. And make sure that it's closed. You can feel around the edge of the ring to make sure it's closed if you like, or look at it really close. Here's where your visor or your um, readers will come in handy. <laughs> So I have my closed jump ring here. Now I'm going to take four of these open jump rings and add them to my closed jump ring one at a time. So I string that through and close it. And I make sure it's nice and closed, that there are no gaps. Then I pick up another open jump ring and string it through that center closed one. So now I have two jump rings going through one in the center here. Now pick up another and add it. And I'm using my pliers to pick up my jump rings. This is just a quick tip. I'm using my pliers to pick up my jump rings because my pliers don't take up as much room on my jump rings as my fingers. three, and now the fourth. Now in this design, I have four rings going into one. These four rings going into that one ring is the basis for the European four in one weave. Something unique about this weave is it has a certain way that it expands where it will expand one way, but not another. I kind of think of it like corduroy fabric that has the lines on it, where the corduroy fabric will stretch in one direction, but not in the other. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I have a small piece of European 4-in-1 here that I've been working on with a, about, um, let's see, this is a 20 gauge, but 1 8 on the inside diameter. So it's much smaller, but you can see in this design how if I continue making this pattern in one direction, I get a certain look. And if I go in the other direction, I get a different look. So let me show you here. First of all, I have to lay this out and straighten it up. Something really unique about chainmail when you're working is when you pick up a piece, it sometimes gets all jumbled up and you have to figure out where you're at. So I just move that ring over and then move this one under and that will get me the look I'm going for. That gets me the European four in one because each one of these center pieces here has four rings going into it. Now, if I continue my weave that we've been working on here with the larger rings going this direction, I will get this look where it will sort of expand. It'll do it a lot more with these larger rings because there's more room on the inside. But here, you can kind of see and it won't expand this way. Now, if I take this design and I expand it in this direction, I get this look. This is the same weave. Each one of these center rings has four going through it, but it doesn't have as much flexibility to extend in this direction. Either of these can be used to make a bracelet. However, I prefer this look. 
So I'll set those aside and we'll continue what we've been working on. I'll leave them here in the corner for reference. Now, even though I'm going to be extending this design going this direction, I'm going to work with it going toward me. And just as a reminder of that, I'll leave this guy right here. So we're going to be going in this direction. This is the opposite. So I'm ready to add my next ring. I take my open jump ring here and I'm going to use this end that's further down. So if I'm holding my jump rings in this manner, this side right here is further down, which I mean by that it's further away from the tip of the plier. So when I'm working, I will actually hold it like this and twist around and that will act as kind of a, a like a needle and thread almost where it will corkscrew into the design that I'm working on. So I hold my jump ring like that and I come back to the piece here and I go through two, the two bottom rings. So go through that side and through that side. And I close it. Now this ring is going through two. So that means I just need to add two more to make it a four in one. One there and one there. And you see everything gets jumbled up a little bit as you work. So all you have to do is straighten everything out and you can see what's going on. If you look at this like three different rows, then know that every ring in this row will not go through another ring in this row. Everything in this row will not go through another in that row. Everything here will not go through another. It's just the rings in the center are going through the sides. At this point, all I have to do is just repeat everything that I've done so far. I add one ring to the center and then one on each side. Here's another trick for you. Things get a little fiddly when you're first starting out and you know, you can knock the pattern out of sorts and you really want to keep everything nice and organized so you can see what you're doing. Sometimes you can take just a little piece of tape and use that to hold the top of your design down as you work the other direction. And another thing that helps with that is if your tape is actually sticky. Now that I have more woven on here, you can really see what I was talking about, the way the four in one expands and contracts only in one direction. If you wanted to do the second design where it's more elongated, I'll show you how to do that. 
You start with the same four in one pattern that you use to start this, but we're going to go this direction. So I'll turn in this way, move these out of the way. So you add your next jump ring right here. And close it. Then two more. This one's a lot easier to see. This direction works up a lot quicker than the last one we were doing because it's an expanded version. Now that I've shown you the two different directions that you can go to with this European four in one chainmail pattern, I'm going to go back to the first way that I showed you that's in the more collapsed version, a little thicker, and I'm going to use that with the smaller jump rings that I showed you and I'm going to make a bracelet. I'm going to use the smaller jump rings for this inside diameter. So you'll see the difference here. That's the small one. And this is the large one. Now you saw how floppy the larger rings were when I was working with them. That's the nice thing about working with the smaller jump rings is they make a tighter pattern and it's really a lot easier to see, I think. This is the same technique. You take one jump ring and make sure that that is closed. Yeah, definitely pulling out the readers for this one. <laughs> And do that three more times. Now, just like I did before, I'm going to keep adding those smaller jump rings one at a time until I get a longer piece. And I'm going to keep working until I get a length long enough for a bracelet. And I'll show you how to add a clasp. Make sure you stop and measure this occasionally, and don't forget to leave enough room for a clasp at the end. Well, 
Well, I got a little carried away and it looks like the chainmail part of my bracelet is seven and a half inches in length. That's a little bit long for me. So I'm going to back this up a little bit to seven inches. So I count here and it looks like one, two, three, four. I need to go back four of the center rings and I can just reach in and grab that one and unlink it and that will unlink that section. Maybe I can use that for earrings or something. This is where having very skinny pliers comes in really handy. So I open that ring and back that out. I can even use that to start another bracelet if I like. Now I just need to decide how I want to add a clasp. Basically on this, I'm just going to use a standard lobster claw clasp. I have a nice big chunky one here. The way the hole is on this clasp, if I just added this to the end, it would sit like that, which I think I like. So I'm going to add one jump ring to the end here and run that one jump ring through my clasp. Before I close that jump ring, I'm going to add the clasp. And that takes up a whole lot of space in this jump ring. Now, what do I do on the other side? If you notice when I pick this up and it's loose, then this just hangs around and these flop around. And so I'm going to just put one jump ring on the end and that's going to straighten this out. And I'll make sort of an extender chain and that will give that lobster claw something to hold on to. If you watched my earlier videos with Chainmail, then maybe you learned how to make a Mobius ball. And if you want to, you can make a decorative ending on this little extension chain by turning that last link into a Mobius. So I'm going to do that. If you haven't seen my earlier videos, this would be a good opportunity to check those out and figure out how I did that. I hope you enjoyed the chainmail project. If you did, give me a like. Don't forget to hit subscribe and click on the notification bell because you don't want to miss the next project. What I plan for the European foreign one is showing you how to speed weave next so you can get this bracelet done in maybe half the time. Now that you know, go make something.